Seminário Arte e Descolonização, um seminário organizado pelo MASP em colaboração com a Afterall. E agora vamos ter a oportunidade de ouvir a nossa última palestra, a última conferência aqui do dia. É, antes de apresentar a nossa palestrante, é, eu gostaria de lembrá-los que, é, para enviar as perguntas, vocês podem é, escrever num, nas folhas de papel que, e entregar para as pessoas que estão circulando é, no auditório, no, nos, nas laterais. É, gostaria de convidar e agradecer a presença de Bambi Köppens, que é doutora em Antropologia Social, pesquisadora sênior no Royal Museum for Central Africa, professora convidada de Antropologia da Arte na Ghent School of the Arts e professora visitante de Arte Não Ocidental na St. Lucas School of Arts em Antuérpia. Sua pesquisa é focada em arte congolesa, passado colonial e legado cultural do Congo belga, congoleses na Bélgica, representações da África e, de seus Afri e dos africanos em museus, descolonização de antigos museus coloniais e autoctonia. Foi curadora da exposição Independence, Congolese and Tell Their Stories, 50 Years of Independence, uh, no, também no Royal Museum for Central Africa, é, em 2010. É uma das curadoras-chefe da nova exposição permanente, também do Royal Museum for Central Africa, e curadora da Galeria sobre Presença Africana na Bélgica, História Pós-Colonial e Representações da África e dos Africanos. Convido agora a Bambi Köppens para a sua fala, aqui encerrando o nosso seminário e agradecendo a presença de todos. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for having invited me, uh, rather. Um, that was a very pleasant surprise, um, and I'm very excited to uh, be visiting Brazil for the very first time, even though I'm extremely jet-lagged, so I hope I'm not going to fall asleep uh, in the middle of this uh, presentation. At the same time, I was also rather surprised um, that there would be interest uh, for Uh, the museum, uh, museum interviewing as far as uh, Brazil. Um, we've heard a lot of um, theoretical debate about uh, decolonization these uh, past two days. And before starting, I should say that uh, when I joined the museum some 10 years ago, I knew all about the literature uh, on uh, curating exhibitions and representations in exhibitions, but I knew nothing about making uh, exhibitions at all. Uh, whereas uh, 10 years later, as I'm practically working uh, exclusively on the new permanent exhibition, I've got to know a thing or two about making exhibitions, but unfortunately I can't keep up with the literature about uh, exhibition making, curating, representations, and so on and so forth. So that's why these uh, two days have been extremely fruitful for me. But as I say, at the same time, my uh, presentation will probably be um, a bit more on the practical side uh, than of uh, the speakers uh, who have uh, preceded me. Um, I'm having some difficulties seeing what is on the screen right in front of me. Uh, as I'm probably smaller uh, than uh, most speakers, so I'll try to stand on my toes and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I can't say anything about the uh, renovation of our museum without uh, telling you something about its history, which is rather particular. Um, um, and it is related to King Leopold II, the second king of the Belgians, uh, who had this ambition of um, Uh, for Belgium uh, to have a colony, uh, which uh, unfortunately for him, the Belgian government at the time was not in the least interested in. And so he ended up acquiring his own um, personal um, uh, property uh, in the center of Africa, which was called at the time the Congo Free State. Um, and having visited um, the exhibition uh, last uh, night, 
Um, it's worth pointing out to you that the country that we call the Congo, uh, which uh, was the Congo Free State, now Democratic Republic of Congo, should not be confused with the Congo Kingdom that is mentioned uh, in the exhibition. The Congo Kingdom is actually spread out over four different countries in Central Africa, uh, including uh, DRC. Um, here you can see on the map uh, the vast differences uh, between this uh, tiny sp uh, speck, which is Belgium in Western uh, Europe, and then this huge uh, country uh, in uh, the heart of Africa, uh, which is roughly two-thirds the size of Western uh, Europe. Um, Initially, so uh, Leopold II uh, wanted first and foremost to um, exploit uh, Congo uh, economically. Uh, initially, he was not very successful in doing so, uh, even though the ivory and the tropical wood that were exported from Congo were very important uh, in the development of a new artistic movement at the time, uh, which was called uh, Art uh, Nouveau. Um, but he really uh, only struck gold um, from uh, the moment um, that um, wild rubber uh, was um, discovered uh, in uh, Congo, which at the time was very much uh, in demand due uh, to the new uh, automobile uh, industry as well as uh, new bicycles, uh, which needed tires, which could easily be made from rubber. But the exploitation uh, of that rubber was accompanied by levels of violence which were um, um, pretty extreme, uh, even by the standard of other European uh, colonies uh, at the time. Um, and the most uh, known, the most infamous uh, images of that um, are those of uh, Congolese posing with uh, hands that were uh, cut off. Um, this led to an international outcry um, and a report by the uh, then British uh, consul, consul Roger uh, Casement, uh, which heavily condemned um, what was going on there. But with the fortune that Leopold II managed uh, to um, uh, accumulate uh, in Congo, um, he started embellishing uh, different Belgian cities and more in particular uh, uh, Brussels. Um, and it is in this context that we have to understand um, how uh, the current uh, Royal Museum for Central Africa came uh, into being. Um, he built uh, an arc in the center of Brussels, which then a socialist leader, Emil van der Velde, uh, called the Arc of the Cut of Hands, uh, which was connected um, through, uh, uh, by means of a vast uh, a thoroughfare um, that he had also constructed to uh, the royal domain in Ter where in 1897, he uh, created the uh, Palace of the Colonies for the organization of a colonial ex exhibition that was dependent of an, uh, an international exhibition that took place in Brussels at the time and uh, by means of which he wanted to uh, interest Belgians in general and uh, um, uh, industrialists uh, in particular uh, in the economic exploitation of uh, the Congo. Um, and uh, here are some uh, images uh, of uh, the galleries and you will notice the sharp contrast between the neoclassical architecture on the outside uh, and then the Art Nouveau um, design uh, on uh, the inside uh, and in fact Leopold, uh, the uh, Leopold II rather, was a patron of uh, the most famous uh, Art Nouveau uh, architects and designers uh, at the time. Um, but um, the, uh, what interested most of uh, the visitors at the time, that was the exhibition of 267 Congolese men, women, and children who had to act out uh, uh, scenes of everyday lives, uh, of their everyday life in uh, villages that were constructed there uh, specifically uh, for uh, the exhibition. Um, seven uh, of 
uh, uh, the Congolese uh, exhibited their uh, diet, uh, and uh, after some time, they were finally buried uh, in front of the church uh, in Tervuren. There was also a village um, that uh, showed um, so-called civilized Congolese, i.e. school children who at the time had already followed school uh, in Belgium and were not allowed to interact with the Congolese uh, who uh, would not have been uh, civilized, i.e. the ones staying in the other uh, village. But um, in the meantime, uh, Leopold, II, uh, uh, Leopold II was forced um, uh, to set up an inquiry commission of, its, uh, of his own um, because the international outcry uh, over the violence in the Congo Free State would not abate. Um, and so much to his own surprise, um, that commission that he himself had created endorsed uh, the results of the casement report, which I already mentioned. Um, and so uh, Leopold II was forced to hand over control of Congo uh, to uh, Belgium, so that in a sense what he had always wanted right from the start, uh, i.e. for Belgium to acquire a colony, uh, finally happened um, in uh, situations, in circumstances that he was not too happy about. In the meantime, the palace of the colonies uh, that he had built had become a permanent uh, museum, but as it had got too small for all the collections that kept on arriving from Congo, um, he had a new uh, museum building constructed. But by the time um, that uh, it opened, um, first of all, uh, he died. He died in 1909, and it was inaugurated by his successor, uh, Albert I, one year later in 1910. Um, then, at the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Belgium's colonization of Congo in 1958, uh, another world exhibition, the last in Belgian history, was organized uh, in Brussels, um, where once again uh, Congolese were exhibited, um, and this time uh, the Congolese uh, who were exhibited there stayed uh, on the museum site uh, uh, in Tervuren, uh, from where they went to work, as it were, uh, every day uh, by a bus that took them to the center of Brussels. Um, and on the left-hand side, a photograph that circulates on internet um, that um, is not in our collections, but our historians uh, have decided that it is very likely that it was indeed uh, taken uh, in the Belgian pavilion, a young uh, Congolese girl being fed uh, by visitors, and on the right-hand side, a photograph uh, from our collections showing a young boy being exhibited uh, at uh, the exhibition, very much as was the case in 1897. Um, 1958 was also the last time um, that there were major interventions uh, in the uh, uh, museum interviewer and two of its most emblematic um, uh, objects entered, uh, like the uh, big pirogue on the left-hand side and the stuffed uh, uh, animal on the right-hand side. Then two years later, um, 1960, Congo became uh, independent, and from one day to the next, the Museum for Belgian Congo became the Royal Museum for Central Africa. Um, the museum was adrift, um, it had to reinvent itself, um, and for a long time it did not succeed in doing uh, so. Um, and so, um, until it uh, finally closed for a major renovation in 2013, uh, the museum was often called, also in the uh, scientific literature, uh, the last colonial museum uh, in the world. Um, on what uh, was that based? Well, for instance, on these kind of uh, 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 statues with the message, in this case being Belgium uh, bringing civilization uh, to Congo, um, the statue underneath um, is of uh, an artist, which is very uh, 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 fruitless, uh, considering um, the gathering that we have um, here today. But I when you actually compare, uh, say, the photographs of the most recent uh, permanent exhibition that, as I said, uh, uh, closed in 2013, uh, and the original photographs, you will see that over time, major changes have 
um, indeed taken place, um, but that um, until 2013, uh, almost 60 years uh, after um, uh, Congolese independence, uh, the museum had very much retained um, a colonial atmosphere. And just uh, to give you a few uh, impressions, um, and what was also typical for the museum was that uh, un almost until the very end, um, there was a huge emphasis upon the so-called pioneers um, who had uh, conquered and occupied uh, Congo um, in the service uh, of uh, Leopold II. Uh, with uh, here, for instance, the infamous uh, memorial room uh, with the name of 1,508 uh, Belgian uh, men, mostly military, who died um, in Congo between 1885 and 1908, and without any mention of the uh, more than uh, uh, probably millions of Congolese uh, who died there as a result uh, of uh, the violence. Now, what makes the RMCA um, a colonial um, museum? Well, it's uh, good to bear in mind um, that uh, the RMCA is first and foremost um, a research uh, institute, and one of the reasons uh, why for such a long time uh, the permanent exhibition was neglected uh, was that uh, the direction throughout the years um, have um, privileged uh, the scientific research uh, behind uh, um, the scenes. Um, but um, what was uh, particular about the RMCA and other uh, similar colonial museums was this ambition uh, to really bring uh, under a single roof all the nature and culture that was to be uh, uh, found uh, in Congo, as a result of which um, uh, barely 1% of all the collections were ever uh, on display. Um, and also, and this goes back um, to some of um, the uh, papers that uh, we heard previously, starting with yesterday, the idea uh, of the representation of the novel savage, um, the paradox that even if colonization was meant actually to civilize Congolese, in actual practice, um, what one very often saw uh, was that those Congolese uh, who supposedly had already reached a certain uh, level of uh, civilization were actually denigrated, uh, whereas those who were still primitive, uh, as it were, uh, were idealized as novel uh, savages. Um, and this was related to um, what James Clifford has called uh, the salvage paradigm, um, or Renato uh, Rosaldo imperialistic nostalgia. Uh, Johannes uh, Fabian uh, talks about forgetting Africa. What it basically means is, or what the outcome is, that a colonial museum actually shows pre-colonial societies as if colonization uh, had never taken uh, place. Um, so right until almost the end, there were uh, practically no objects uh, in uh, the permanent exhibition that showed the influence uh, of interactions with Europeans, that showed the influence of European, uh, uh, or, uh, European culture on Congolese culture. And that obviously reinforced an image of Congolese who were still in dire need uh, of being uh, civilized uh, by um, by uh, Belgians. Whereas we know uh, in actual fact, uh, and these are just a few examples, um, that uh, for instance in the Congo Kingdom, uh, artists started making so-called tourist art right from the first contacts uh, with uh, Europeans, that some of the so-called masterpieces uh, in the RMCA's uh, collections are actually uh, forms uh, of uh, tourist art. Um, that, um, as I said, these kind uh, of paintings, uh, the first uh, Congolese and even the first uh, African painters uh, using uh, European materials uh, were denigrated for a very long time because their art was not considered authentically uh, Congolese. Um, whereas um, it is very likely um, that even if these painters uh, used uh, modern materials, 
um, they were actually inspired as far as the images uh, were concerned uh, by uh, rock art uh, which uh, as far as we have been able to ascertain uh, dates from as far as the 7th century. And these are just a few images that give you an idea of the kind of representations that you find in these so-called modern paintings and these uh, older rock art. Um, uh, we think of abstract uh, paintings as typical for Western modernism, whereas it was something that Congolese did as well, um, but then inspired by so-called uh, traditional objects. Um, and uh, another uh, example, these um, masks, uh, on at first glance are typical uh, 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 traditional uh, objects, but that does not mean uh, that they do not testimony uh, to the times in which they were created. Uh, um, actually, it's uh, on the contrary. So these uh, were uh, created during the 1920s at a time that Pende, uh, who created them, uh, were uh, very hostile towards uh, the forced uh, cultivation uh, of palm oil, and that explains why uh, this kind of mask represents uh, a European as an ogre, a monster. Um, and we know indeed that in 1931, at a time of the uh, worldwide economic crisis, um, when uh, Pende had to uh, even uh, work more for even less money, um, they revolted and the statue on the right hand side uh, shows the Belgian colonial ag uh, agent who was killed. Uh, who set off the revolt uh, in which uh, uh, more than, uh, it's estimated that between 5,000 and 10,000 Pende uh, were killed by uh, the colonial uh, army. Um, I'm just going, um, I'm that I do not have time to talk to all the images, but surely if you have uh, questions, I'd be happy to answer those uh, in the discussion afterwards. Um, reorganization. Um, this is um, a painting by the Congolese painter, Sheri Samba, uh, which he painted for the museum uh, in 2003, uh, which shows a tussle between the uh, white uh, museum employees and Congolese, a tussle uh, over the leopard man, uh, the statue in the middle, uh, which for Congolese is emblematic for uh, colonial primitive representations of uh, Congolese, and the man in the black suit there in the middle um, is the current director who started the process uh, of the renovation of the museum uh, in 2000, 2001. Um, um, and he basically says, uh, yes, it's sad, but it is true that the museum has to be organized. Now, that um, reorganization um, is not, cannot be limited uh, to the content um, of the tem uh, permanent exhibition. When we are talking about renovation, when we are talking about decolonizing the museum, we are also, and not in the least, talking about collaboration with African diasporas, artists, and associations. Um, and here it is uh, important to bear in mind that contrary uh, to Brazil, Congo was never a settler society, um, that the presence of African diasporas uh, in Belgium is actually very small, that it is certainly true that they are marginalized, but perhaps not in the sense that uh, most of you think of marginalization uh, in relation to indigenous uh, people in Brazil, uh, because actually uh, individuals of African descent, uh, black Belgians are on average, have on average a higher level of education than uh, white Belgians, but they also combine that with the highest level of unemployment, which uh, is related uh, to uh, structural racism, discrimination, um, etc. Um, and again, just um, images to give you some idea of uh, the collaborations with uh, African diasporas, like the creation of an African Associations com uh, Committee, um, the organization of the annual journey for African uh, associations, collaborations uh, on uh, um, exhibitions, uh, but also, for instance, uh, on musical uh, albums, uh, participation uh, in uh, um, 
festivals that are organized uh, by Congolese uh, and also uh, an exhibition outside uh, the walls of the museum uh, in the shop windows uh, of uh, the African neighborhood uh, in Brussels uh, with uh, images, with photographs uh, from uh, the museum's uh, collections. And then um, also important um, in the process of decolonization is what happens not in the exhibition but again uh, behind the scenes such as workshops um, and other uh, activities. Um, and then um, also very important um, temporary exhibition on the left hand side, Exit Congo Museum was the first um, exhibition in the history uh, of the museum. Um, that actually um, showed the ways in which various so-called masterpieces has, uh, had ended up in the museum collections, but it was also the first that was co-curated by um, a Congolese. And then in 2005, the first exhibition that dealt with uh, the, con uh, uh, the colonial past in Congo. And then in 2010, as mentioned, uh, I was um, a curator of uh, an exhibition on a Congolese uh, independence, and that was the first exhibition in which uh, we tried to tell uh, Congolese history uh, exclusively uh, from a Congolese uh, perspective. Um, also important in the decolonization of the museum, uh, artists in residence. All our artists in residence thus far have come from Congo. The first were Sami Baloji and Padrik Mudikerezza uh, in 2011. Um, uh, Sami Baloji, um, in the meantime, has become uh, one of uh, the best known uh, contemporary African artist who has exhibited uh, in Documenta and at the uh, uh, Viennese uh, Biennale, but uh, when we organized what was probably his first uh, exhibition in Europe, uh, there was actually uh, very uh, little uh, interest uh, in it, and again I uh, show you just uh, some uh, images. Uh, these are works by Sami, um, and these uh, are works uh, by uh, Padrik Mudikerezze. Uh, our next um, uh, artist in residence, uh, Iviar uh, uh, Izamba. Uh, so all our artist in residence uh, actually uh, work uh, on our archives uh, and collections uh, in order uh, to create uh, works um, of art. Um, and then, um, and that's the last part that I will talk about, um, is where my own uh, involvement started when uh, I joined the museum uh, in 2007. Um, and then uh, we are really talking, uh, say, about the renovation uh, of the building as well as uh, the renovation of the permanent exhibition. Um, it is important to realize that the museum is not the proprietor but the owner, um, and so that the renovation uh, was financed by the Belgian federal gov uh, government at a tune of uh, practically 70 million euro, uh, whereas it was left to uh, the museum itself to find a budget for the creation of uh, the actual permanent uh, uh, exhibition. Um, so that gives you already an idea, say, um, of the priorities. So it was also um, the uh, federal um, uh, uh, government agency uh, that manages uh, federal uh, buildings that organized the competition. Um, and the competition was won by a Belgian architect whose concept was to return to the original concept of uh, the French architect uh, Charles uh, Giraud. Um, so, um, the idea was um, actually uh, to go back to the original uh, concept in the sense that at the time when uh, Giraud um, constructed uh, the museum, um, all that was to be found within its wall was a, a permanent uh, exhibition. Over time, uh, the museum had to find space for other functions such as uh, a shop, um, a restaurant, um, workshops, uh, and so on and so forth. And so um, the architect's idea was to actually put all those uh, functions uh, in a new uh, museum building um, that would then uh, be connected 
uh, with the historical building by means of an underground gallery uh, in which uh, there would be uh, uh, galleries for temporary um, exhibitions. Um, and here some photographs uh, of the works um, and uh, of uh, uh, the uh, uh, end result uh, of the works, both the construction of the new building and the restoration uh, of the historical building. And again, this is just to give you an impression. But it's also very important uh, to realize that um, the museum is a monument, and it's not only the architecture that uh, is protected, but also the glass cases. Uh, so we had to recuperate as many glass cases, original glass cases, as we possibly could. Um, and we had to reconstruct those uh, that uh, were uh, missing. Um, the design um, and the content uh, were developed in collaboration uh, with um, African diasporas. As far as my own involvement is concerned, um, I started out as one of many members of uh, the steering committee made up uh, of representatives of the uh, Scientific uh, Institute, Public Services, Collection Management and African diasporas in order to construct the storyline and the narrative, the scenario of the permanent exhibition until in 2015, after a, an external uh, audit, uh, the whole organization uh, was uh, reviewed uh, and I ended up one of two general curators, more particularly uh, for uh, the humanities of the permanent exhibition. And obviously um, this does not mean uh, that in three years time um, I had the power to actually change everything that had uh, happened uh, uh, before. Um, uh, it's also important to um, uh, uh, remember that we're not talking uh, about an uh, individual exhibition, but an institutional uh, exhibition, i.e. one that is ideally carried by as many uh, employees uh, as uh, possible. Um, now, we realized that uh, as the day of uh, the closure of the museum um, uh, came closure, that there was this increasing what uh, I would call white post-imperialist nostalgia, i.e. the idea that we should not renovate the museum, but that we should leave it as a museum of a museum. Quite frankly, this is something that we have never even contemplated. Uh, first of all, because we realized only too well uh, that uh, the permanent exhibition was offensive to our African visitors, uh, and also because uh, most uh, uh, Belgians, irrespective uh, of their cultural or ethnic background, are introduced to Africa by means of a visit to uh, the museum, and therefore uh, it seemed very important to us that the first uh, impression that they would get would not be a colonial representation of Africa, but rather contemporary um, Africa. Um, now, it is very often argued that in order for the RMCA to decolonize itself, um, it should um, focus almost exclusively uh, upon commemorating the atrocities that were committed uh, in Congo in Leopold II's name. Um, and uh, I have always been uh, very much uh, against that idea. Uh, I think that a true decolonial reading for Grant's Congolese agency, cultural and history, situates colonial history in the long history of DRC, i.e. shows what was never shown in the previous permanent exhibition, that Congolese had their own history centuries before the arrival of Belgians at the end of the 19th century, but also um, that it should allow Congolese to make the museum uh, their own, um, and the saying that they themselves uh, always uh, use, and um, that they say um, uh, was expressed by Mahatma Gandhi, although uh, I have not been able to uh, find it, but it's the idea that uh, what you do for me uh, without me, you do against me, as was the case 
uh, with uh, colonization, with Congolese never asked for. So now they also, for the first time, they really want a stake uh, in what uh, they consider also their uh, history uh, and their uh, objects which are in the museum uh, collections. Um, I do not have too much time, uh, I'm afraid, to go into uh, all the differences um, between uh, the old colonial museum, and here I'm really not, uh, uh, clearly, not talking on uh, an abstract level, I'm really talking about the p particularity uh, of, a uh, of a colonial or a former uh, colonial uh, museum um, as uh, our own, and one of the aspects that is important there um, with reference uh, to what I said, i.e. the idea that in the uh, previous permanent exhibition there were hardly any objects which shows uh, uh, the influence of context with Europeans is actually to show uh, a wide variety of African objects, not only the so-called traditional ones, uh, but also popular culture, contemporary art, um, and uh, so on. Um, uh, and so forth, and as I said, uh, ideally uh, in close collaboration with African diasporas. Um, now, this is not an easy process, as you saw uh, on the previous slide. Uh, there are about 85 uh, researchers working behind the scenes. Uh, they do not always see uh, eye to eye. Um, and then there are uh, often major tensions between researchers and exhibition makers. Um, but also between researchers, exhibition makers, and uh, African uh, diasporas. Um, and um, to give you some idea of the tensions that can arise uh, between uh, the RMCA and the African diasporas um, is obviously the struggle for the recognition of different types of expertise. Um, it's not obvious for all our researchers that Africans also have a certain kind of expertise uh, on uh, the objects uh, in uh, our collections, even if they do not necessarily have a PhD, uh, for instance. Um, there's also um, the tension between scientific knowledge um, versus uh, a more personal and emotional uh, involvement. Um, but um, there are al also other problems, i.e. that some African uh, diasporas or members of African diasporas on the one hand uh, can idealize African cultures and it's, uh, uh, there it's uh, important to bear in mind that certainly the younger or, or most of the younger generations have never been in Africa. Uh, they have been born and bred uh, in Belgium, uh, so their idea of Africa is not based upon any uh, 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 direct experience, um, but we also see the reverse, uh, for instance, um, a denigration for certain cultural elements, such as, for instance, popular culture. Um, some members of African diasporas try to tell us, if you show that, uh, people will think that those artists are not capable of also creating contemporary art. Uh, for instance, whereas obviously one does not uh, exclude uh, the other. Um, and then um, it is true, I think, um, that uh, um, the RMCA um, can be blind to its power position as part of the Belgian establishment, um, and that also means that it does not realize sufficiently uh, enough um, that when uh, collaborating with African diasporas, we do not do uh, so on equal footing. Um, we have a history uh, of inequality, um, and obviously when you're dealing with an institution uh, as opposed to individual members of a marginalized group in society, um, that obviously uh, creates tensions that you have to be able to deal with, um, and we have not always been able to do so. Uh, also, uh, the debate um, on decolonization, the public debate on decolonization and restitution institution uh, is developing very fast um, and it is not always easy uh, for my colleagues who are not following this on an everyday basis to actually catch up uh, with that uh, and uh, adapt uh, to that. Um, and um, I think that uh, we are also a bit too much enthralled to our own vast collections. Um, 
this gives you an idea uh, of uh, the ways in which that uh, thematics uh, have um, evolved uh, throughout uh, time. Um, I will not say too much about um, the um, exhibition itself. Um, although this um, image gives you an idea indeed of the combination of so-called traditional and uh, contemporary or uh, popular uh, uh, art, uh, there will be uh, artistic uh, intervention in some of the most contentious uh, galleries such as the Memorial Gallery I talked about or um, the Rotonda with the infamous uh, golden statues that are also protected. Uh, and that uh, we therefore um, cannot take out. There is only one gallery that will indeed um, be retained in its original state in as far as possible, uh, but uh, its counterpart on the other side of the internal garden uh, will show um, a traffic robot created by a female engineer uh, in uh, Kinshasa, some examples of contemporary art. Um, and then finally, from, uh, from, uh, uh, from tier to contact zone. And it is important to bear in mind that uh, Pratt's um, concept of the contact zone uh, does not refer to uh, a situation where equals meet uh, on equal footing, but by contrast, refers to a situation um, whereby there is a history and often a long uh, history of structural inequality, racism, uh, and so on and so forth. And all that, um, as I already uh, says, obviously weighs upon the ways in which an institution such as ours can actually uh, collaborate with African diasporas in order to really um, decolonize um, the uh, museum. Um, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, museums remain uh, asymmetric spaces of uh, appropriation um, where um, real uh, inequality um, remains an ideal that we can strive for, uh, but that uh, we um, have not um, actually gained uh, right now. Um, and in order to get there, um, it is first and for, for uh, most important that we increase the number of uh, employees of African descent uh, within uh, the museum. But in the meantime, um, um, we will uh, reopen uh, on the 8th of December. And so our next uh, project is to see how we will continue the decolonization of uh, the museum after 8 December. Um, and uh, that will go through the continuous development uh, with um, African diasporas, but we have to uh, create a new policy for that. And as I said, um, also uh, increase the number of um, uh, employees of, Africans, uh, of uh, African descent uh, in the museum. And I'll leave it at that, but I'm quite happy to uh, answer to any questions uh, that uh, you may further have also in relation to slides that I did not have the time to discuss. Thank you very much. Obrigada, Bambi, pela sua apresentação, né, com considerações muito interessantes, né, pensar o um museu é, numa perspectiva descolonial, que é algo que também é muito importante para o MASP e a sua história, a sua programação. Eu queria que você falasse, já que você mostrou algumas imagens também é, nos seus slides, de que forma o Museu é, Real de Arte pra, da, da África Central se insere no imaginário coletivo belga, em que lugar da cidade ele se encontra e de que maneira é, isso também é uma proposta, um desafio para a renovação do, dessa nova fase de renovação do museu. Uh, well, uh Thank you. Uh, the museum is not uh, situated uh, in Brussels. Um, as I said, it is uh, situated uh, in Tervuren, uh, which is a village outside Brussels. Uh, it's, it's some uh, 20 kilometers um, out of Brussels. 
um, it's the major uh, monument uh, to the colonial past uh, in uh, the Belgian uh, landscape, physical and uh, imaginary landscape. Um, and so um, Belgians do not like to deal with um, their colonial past too much. Um, and so it is a task that they are quite happy to delegate to the museum, um, which is problematic um, insofar that uh, obviously uh, um, colonization has impregnated Belgian society in various different ways. Um, and so it is something I think that various segments of Belgium society ideally should ad address directly. Um, and um, I talked, for instance, about um, uh, the influence uh, of um, uh, a Congolese tropical wood uh, and ivory uh, on Art Nouveau, um, which is um, a style that um, Belgian society is very proud of. Um, that is very important also for the tourist uh, industry. So a lot of tourists come to uh, look at those magnificent uh, Art Nouveau buildings. There is a whole new museum that is dedicated to uh, the art of the turn of the century. Um, but nowhere is this uh, colonial connection mentioned at all. Um, and so there are various uh, of, uh, different uh, examples that I can think of. Uh, another one is um, the, the recent debate about um, colonial monuments in public space, uh, which nine times out of ten uh, uh, show either Leopold II uh, or uh, one of the military men um, that um, were actually employed by him uh, to uh, uh, occupy or colonize Congo. And then um, a lot of municipalities, they do not really know what to do uh, with them. And so then some argue, well, we will basically sh um, put them all in the park um, yeah, uh, interviewing, which first of all is not possible because the park is also a protected monument, so you cannot uh, use it as a depot to put in uh, whatever you want. But again, um, I see it uh, as a way to actually try to exercise that colonial past without dealing with it and without addressing it. Um, and so the challenge, I think, is not only for our museum, but is for Belgian society in general. Um, mais uma pergunta aqui. Um, Bambi, gostaria de saber o que você pensa sobre o processo de renovação conceitual, é, não só a nível da arquitetura, display, discursos dos museus etnológicos na Europa, de modo geral também, e de que forma é, essa renovação do, do Museu Real da África Central se insere ou não ou difere né, desse processo de renovação, atualização e perspectiva crítica em relação a displays e exposições que revelam e que é, decorrem desses processos coloniais. Um, as, as I said, um, I think it is important to bear in mind that the um, our difference between uh, a former settler society such uh, as Brazil and then Congo, which, as I said, never was um, a settler society. Um, and uh, if there was so few uh, individuals of African descent um, in Belgium right now, that is related also to the fact that uh, during the colonial era, Congolese were not allowed uh, to settle uh, in Belgium or even to travel to Belgium without the explicit authorization of the governor uh, general uh, in the uh, uh, colonial capital. So it's a completely different um, situation, um, which does not mean um, that there were uh, no connections, but they tended to be indirect connections, i.e. Uh, most Belgians until very recently had never come face to face uh, with a black person, but most would have um, a relative um, who had worked uh, in Congo uh, in one uh, capacity or other as a colonial agent, as a missionary, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we're talking about a very uh, different kind of uh, a, a, a constellation. Um, and I think that probably um, has repercussions also 
um, um, on the ways in which one can deal with uh, conceptual, uh, conceptual renewals. Um, but um, what I said, and, and, and again, um, uh, this relates, I think, again, to the uh, two different kind of societies that we are talking about. Um, for us, it was inconceivable uh, not to implicate uh, individuals of African descent uh, in the renovation process. Um, whereas um, I have indeed been rather surprised that this was not something that has been talked about uh, in the other presentations. And of course, uh, this can be for very obvious reasons, such as the fact that, for instance, in Belgium, about 50% of all individuals of African descent live uh, in Brussels, so almost literally on the doorstep of the museum. I mean, we're talking about a distance of 20 kilometers. Uh, it takes them 20 minutes to get there by, pu by public transport. Um, and that is obviously a very different situation uh, in a country as big um, as Brazil. Um, but personally speaking, um, I, um, my catchphrase uh, is always that the only way to decolonize the museum uh, is to allow um, Congolese to colonize it. Um, and um, I think indeed that, um, having said that, um, I do not believe um, that uh, our museum will ever become an African museum uh, because it is situated uh, in Belgium. Uh, it has its colonial history, just like your museum has its own particular history. Um, but um, nevertheless, um, I, I do not see how we can actually decolonize ourselves um, if we continue to privilege um, a very specific uh, white uh, scientific uh, perspective uh, on Africa uh, and on uh, our collections. Um, and I would, uh, I cannot imagine um, how you would go about uh, trying to decolonize your museum if you would not indeed try to um, uh, engage um, uh, uh, indigenous people, but uh, also um, uh, black people, um, and so on and so forth, because again, um, I now have the reflex because I said I've, I've been working on the renovation uh, for 10 years and I was certainly struck, for instance, uh, when I look at the exhibition on the first floor, uh, how many, uh, how few um, black people are represented in the audience. This is something that strikes me because this is something that we try to work uh, very hard on. Uh, and that's why I, I think you need uh, two kind of collaborations. You need, on the one hand, the uh, associations that can bring in the public. Um, that does not come for a variety of reasons because it's not, um, they are not used to visiting museums or because uh, the museum such as ours has a bad reputation. People think that it's still a colonial institute. And then on the uh, other hand, um, you need the experts uh, with whom you can work, uh, who can have a variety uh, of different kinds of expertise, uh, scientific expertise, uh, personal expertise, uh, expertise in uh, 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 designing exhibitions, but also artists, uh, uh, guest curators, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so for me, those are really the key elements to start with, and, and uh, I have difficulties uh, imagining um, a different way of doing that, but perhaps that just shows the, like, the uh, limits of my imagination. Obrigada. É, eu tenho mais algumas perguntas relativas às exposições, é, as exposições que você citou também, né, de que tinha uma, trazia uma perspectiva crítica essa Exit Congo, por exemplo, né? A própria exposição que você curou, Independence, que trazia, né, e questionava também é, toda essa toda essa história nos 50 anos né, da, do, da independência do Congo e tentando trazer uma narrativa justamente que não era uma narrativa talvez mais monolítica que se conhecia na Bélgica, mas tentando trazer é, uma interlocução 
com a comunidade congolesa da Bélgica, mas e, e aí vai uma segunda pergunta, se também teve um trabalho de, de diálogo, interlocução e troca com museus e instituições é, no Congo também, nesses projetos em específico. Thank you very much. Um, well, um, that's 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 a paradox. Um, um, the museum has the largest collections from Congo, um, outside Congo, and in fact anywhere in the world. Um, but uh, when I started out um, conceptualizing the exhibition um, on Congolese independence. Um, Uh, in 2010, at the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Congolese independence. Um, and I wanted to tell that story from a Congolese perspective. Uh, it transpired that um, in the end, 80 to 90 percent of the objects that uh, we showed came from elsewhere, i.e. not from our own collections, uh, but from uh, other museum collections uh, or from private collections. Um, and that is because our collections, like uh, any collections uh, in um, any uh, Uh, any private or public collection ultimately tells us a great deal more about the persons who collected them than about the people who actually created the objects. Um, and to give just one example, um, we have, for instance, um, a lot of uh, colonial journals in our collections, but the only journals that we have are the journals that were published for white Europeans uh, during the colonial era. Uh, from the second part of the 1950s, the colonial administration started also creating journals for Congolese. Obviously, this was in a context of censorship, so they could not write whatever they want, but Nevertheless, this was the first time that they could express themselves one way or the other. Um, you can also see that they used the same um, photographs that were uh, created and diffused by what was then called um, uh, the service for colonial propaganda, but that obviously um, they used them in a very different way uh, or to tell dif very different stories. Like for instance, when the first hotel for Congolese was built uh, in a, a township uh, in the capital, um, that was something um, that uh, Belgians most certainly were not aware of, but that made headings uh, in the Congolese press, for instance. And so there were very, um, oh, an, another, uh, I think, typical example uh, is Congolese popular music, uh, which is the pop music uh, to which uh, the whole of Africa dances, uh, the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. We have a very extensive uh, collection of uh, Congolese traditional music, uh, but we have no collection of uh, Congolese popular music. Um, and there are different reasons for that. Um, of obviously, I mean, it is related uh, to uh, mus musicologists' uh, personal research interests. Uh, but one reason is certainly that, as I said, for a very long time, it was uh, uh, thought in our museum that um, these kind of colonial Uh, popular cultural elements were inferior to the so-called traditional uh, popular culture. And the same, for instance, for uh, popular painting. Um, so, um, and that is one uh, of the major uh, challenges uh, for the museum. Um, if we want to become more and more a museum uh, of contemporary Africa, how can we do that given that uh, 90% percent of our collections are actually colonial. Um, and right now, indeed, we are uh, managing our collections rather um, than uh, getting new collections, also due to financial restraints uh, and so on and so forth. Um, as far as collaboration uh, with Congolese uh, institutions uh, is concerned, um, well, actually, uh, I, um, uh, first of all, um, I collaborated um, with uh, members of Congolese diaspora uh, of the Congolese diaspora for that exhibition because, uh, and that also is very striking. For instance, um, uh, to bring in the female perspective, there are very few um, uh, uh, research uh, um, 
uh, projects that actually deal with gender uh, in the colonial context and that can actually um, get you to bring out the uh, female voice. So this is something that I could only get at by talking to uh, women who had lived uh, through uh, the colonial period. Um, but as far as um, uh, a collaboration with Congolese institutions uh, was concerned, um, there was no, um, there was no, I mean, there was, we had talked actually uh, about creating a single uh, exhibition um, that would be shown simultaneously um, in our museum and then um, uh, in Kinshasa, obviously uh, with different objects. Um, in the end, um, that did not happen, um, and that was mostly due to uh, financial constraints um, and time constraints. Um, and so they created their own um, exhibition, which uh, was rather different. Um, but um, our museum does collaborate uh, with the uh, E um, and C, so that's the, in the national, uh, that's the Institute of the National Museums uh, in uh, 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 Congo. So there is a structural collaboration, um, and that will probably uh, intensify. Um, um, because um, they were constructing a new uh, museum uh, in Kinshasa as well, uh, which uh, should, uh, if all goes well, uh, open in 2019. Uh, so I think that the Museum of the RMCA is visiting uh, Kinshasa now as we speak um, to talk um, with the director of the museum there. And there will be um, a conference organized on restitution uh, in Kinshasa uh, next year. Uh, for which the museum, uh, the RM, uh, RMCA, is also invited. Muito obrigada, Bambi. Felizmente, nosso tempo está acabando. É, eu convido todos que tiverem interesse, mais perguntas de, de continuar lá fora, é, com a Bambi e com outros palestrantes que estão aqui presentes. É, queria agradecer a sua presença, a sua fala, a contribuição e Claro, a presença de todos aqui. É, até breve.